Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Inchiting Studio. Have you googled anything about scalable systems or scalability recently? There are more than 123 million results on Google, more than 10,000 research papers, more than 100,000 tutorials blogs on scalability. Scalability became a must skill to have for software engineers. You must know what and how to build a scalable system if you want to work at big companies such as Amazon, Google, Uber, you name it. They work with a massive volume of data, so anything they build must be scalable. So what is scalability? By definition, scalability is the term we use to describe a system's ability to cope with increased load. There can be many different types of loads for a given system, so it doesn't really make sense to attach a one-dimensional label and say something like, oh, this system is scalable. Rather, we should add a bit more context and say, this system is scalable up to 100 millions of requests per second, or this system is scalable up to 10,000 concurrent users. There are two things you need to describe before assessing the scalability aspect of a system. First, you need to describe what types of load you're dealing with. Secondly, you need to describe which performance of your system we need to monitor with respect to the load. Let's start with describing the load for your system. Load can be described with a few numbers which we call load parameters, and these parameters heavily depend on your system architecture. If you're building a system or an application similar to Twitter, you'll be interested in how many requests or queries your system gets per second. Or you might be interested in number of reads versus number of writes operation, which tells you the ratio between number of people posting tweets versus number of people viewing the home timeline. Another example is video streaming application like Netflix. Their main service is to provide video streams to users, so they're interested in how the performance changes as the number of active video stream connection increases. If you want to build an application like Messenger or WhatsApp, you might be interested in how the performance changes respect to the number of simultaneous users in a chat room. Here's a quick question for you. If you're given an interview question to build a ticket reservation system, what would be your load parameter? Once you have chosen your load parameter, you need to choose which performance metrics to look at in order to monitor how your system copes with increasing load. Once again, the appropriate metric largely depends on your system architecture. Let's go through some example using the previous analogy. If you're dealing with a system like Twitter or WhatsApp, you'll be interested in the response time of the users. Response time is what the client experiences, actual time to process the request, plus potential network and queuing delays. Another example is video streaming application like Netflix. One way to measure the performance of such application is looking at the bitrate. It helps you to understand the quality of the video that your users are experiencing. Another quick question for you. Which performance metric would you choose to assess the scalability of your system? So, with the load parameter and the performance metrics, you can tell whether a system can cope with increased load or not. In other words, you can tell whether a system is scalable or not with respect to the chosen load parameter by looking at the performance metrics. Congratulations! Now you know how to assess scalability of a system. Let's finish today's video by looking at different approaches to cope with load. Practically, there are two different ways to cope with increased load. First, increase the resources. Second, redesign or re-architect the system. One thing to note is that there's no such thing as generic, one-size-fits-all scalable architecture. There's no magic scaling sauce. And a system that is appropriate for one level of load is unlikely to cope with 10 times of that load. Regarding the resources, you can either vertically or horizontally scale your system. Vertically scaling means replacing with higher end machines. This can become very expensive. Also, there's a limit to the extent of scaling you can do on a single machine. On the other hand, horizontally scaling means distributing the load across multiple smaller machines. This might increase complexity of your system if it's not already built around shared nothing architecture. The trend here is to horizontally scale your system, but it comes with complexity. Increasing resources alone might not be enough to cope with the increased load. In that case, you might have to redesign your system. Note that designing a scalable system is specific to individual applications. There's no magic scaling sauce or formula. Let's look at what Twitter has done in 2012. 
Initially, they had a system where they store all tweets in a large database and served relevant tweets to users' home feeds by pulling the data directly from the database. As the number of tweets and followers grew significantly over time, their overall response was increasing and they had to consider redesigning their system. They redesigned their system with a fan-out approach. When a user posts a tweet, the system looks up all the people who follow that user and inserts the new tweet into each user timeline caches. This significantly reduced the lookup time. Also, this approach only made sense to them because the read operations were two times bigger than the number of write operations. Final note, an architecture that scales well for a particular application is built around assumptions of which operation will be common and which will be rare. I hope you understand what a scalable system means now. Similar to reliability, this is not an easy concept to grasp at once. Either rewatch this video or find more videos on scalability to prepare for your interview. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Thanks for watching this video. Cheers.